And then our point, when I was at university, I had about seven different ladies that I was dating. Uh, and none of them knew each other, you know. I would, I, would, I would schedule one for morning, I would schedule one for afternoon, I would schedule one for evening, I would schedule one for night. You know, so I was, I was really out there, I began smoking, I began going to the club. So at that point you were in a relationship with seven different women at the same time and none of them knew that you were with another woman? No, none of them knew, none of them knew. So I, I kept on going like that. Um, I lost focus, you know, even eventually I had to drop out of university. Biochemistry will focus on pre-medicine, you know, I had to drop out eventually. And then, uh, you know, it was one of the lady that, I, that I've been with for three years that, um, you know, called the police on me because one of the night that I was at her house, I was already drunk, we were both drunk, I was, I was wasted, you know, and then by the time I opened my eye in the morning, I was in the child's bedroom. So the probable cause was already there, and the child told the mother that I was trying to rape her. So the probable cause was already there. So, so I, we just I want to understand clearly what happened in this scenario. You said you were completely drunk, and when you woke up, you were in the bedroom of a, of a, a young child, the child of that lady, uh, and that, that's how you woke up in that scenario. So yes, I was, I was extremely drunk. We were both drunk, I and the, and the child's mom. So, but when I woke up, you know, like I said, you know, when I drink, I wouldn't know. Because of the alcohol that I drink, I mean, if you, if you Google Everclear, just Google Everclear, Everclear can drive a car, you know, that was what I was drinking. And tequila is very strong, you know, and brandy was very strong. So I would, I would blend tequila and brandy. I would spice it with a little bit of orange juice. That's what I would drink. And, you know, I would, I would, be, I would be lost. Sometimes, and even one of my girlfriends said, uh, there was a night, you know, that I was with her. That, this is another lady. After, after I woke up in the morning, she said she was scared because she thought I was dead. Because I was just laying, laying in bed, you know, like I wasn't breathing. Like my chest wasn't moving. So that's the kind of, the, the way I drink. I would drink and I would just lose consciousness. So that's precisely what happened with this lady this night. And then, uh, you know, when I woke up in the morning, and that was when I realized that, oh, why, why did I end up in here? So, and then the, the child said, told the mother that I was trying to rape her. So she called the police. I couldn't reconcile with her. She called the police. I was arrested. I was put into, I was, I, I was put in detention for three months bonded out and then I began going to trial. So it was when I now began going to trial in uh, 2013 that I met a man of God whose ministry is a partner with the uh, Emmanuel TV in the state. So he was the one that introduced me to this ministry. So at first I was like, when he told me uh, TV Joshua, I was like, what in the world are you doing with TV Joshua? You know, I was like, you could have gone to a, a better place where they got real fire, where they preach, preach real gospel. So, but I, I never knew it's TV Joshua that ended up, you know, delivering me. Even though I came from the same region of the state where the prophet is from, I never re truly believed him. So it was, it was, that's, that was how I got to know Emmanuel TV. And so it was an American pastor in the United States of America who actually was the one who told you about Prophet TB Joshua. Yes. Even though you're a Nigerian, or even from the same states as him, you never believed in him. And it was this encouragement from an American pastor that opened your eyes to discover Emmanuel TV and know Prophet TB Joshua, the truth about him. Ab absolutely, absolutely. So I was, I was even trying to discourage him from talking about it or playing the video. You know, I was like, this man ain't real, man. You know, go, go to other places where they, uh, they use real gospel, preach real gospel. So, but then, you know, eventually I started, I started like, okay, I'm going to start listening. You know, I'm going to start listening to, to what this man is all about. Even though I've known about it in the country before I left, but I, because of the disinformation, I didn't want anything to do with him. You know, so, and then eventually I began listening to the prophet and I began praying with him. And then, you know, hope started coming to me, even though I was, big, I was already going through trial. In fact, I was, I was looking at 30 to 40 years in prison, you know, for the sentence. You know, I was looking at 30 to 40 years. And then when I, when I, when I began praying with the prophet, hope began coming. And then when I, when I lost the case, uh, they gave me a simple battery. I was, I was shocked, like, oh my God. 
without a paid lawyer and you got a public defender and then you, they, you got a simple battery over a case as significant as this you know i was i was sort of grateful and then they gave me a five-year sentence 2014 and by the special grace of god they let me out after two years and and then when they let me out you know i i, I came here and then i'm and then I've been coming since I got back this year. Okay, so a, pr a sentence that you were expecting to be between 30 and 40 years because of the issue of rape actually ended up being just a five-year prison sentence and after two years you were released and deported back to Nigeria. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, when they let me out, they were like, um, you know, you, you, you got to go because you're not a U.S. citizen. After being in the state for 10 years, you know, uh, they say you gotta go because uh, you can't. We can't let you stay here. So I signed, and then I ended up in Nigeria. And then when I came, you know, it happened that you know God loved me so much, and it's kind of like giving me a, a new beginning. You know, uh, on the seventh of uh, this month, you know, I got a revelation, and I saw the prophet gave me a note. Uh, on that note, he wrote number 17 on it. That was on the 7th of this month. So he gave me a note with number 17 on it, and I never really, you know, understood. Like, okay, here's prophet giving me a note for number 17, but I never really truly understood it. But then when I came to church on, on Sunday the 16th, you know, he called my case. You know, he called my case on the 16th, and then I stepped out, and when I stepped out, that was it. And then on the seventh thing that he wrote down for me on the seventh of this month was the day I got my deliverance. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So, brother, can you just describe to us when you received that deliverance, what happened to you as the prophet prayed for you? Uh, <laughs> you know, even before I left Nigeria, it's been one nightmare after another. You know, I would see cow chasing me, like I said. I would see all kind of strangers, you know, even sometimes, some of them will be men, you know, trying to romance me, you know, and, you know, snake, like, biting me, and people shooting at me. If I got shot, like, three times in my, in my dreams, you know, so, and then masquerades coming after me, like, you know, you got something we need, you know, so they be chasing me all around, you know, it was one nightmare after, after eating in the dream, you know, all that. And, and then, but then when I got prayed for, since, since Monday, you know, I've been sleeping like a, like a little baby, you know. You know, I ain't got no bad dreams. I ain't got no female showing up in my dream. I ain't got, I ain't got no ghost, like, trying to get me. So I'm grateful to God. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So that's how our brother is completely delivered. And brother, as, as the prophet prayed for you, we saw that evil spirit manifest. Can you just recall what happened when he prayed for you? How did you feel at that moment when he prayed for you? Um, when his hand hit me, it was like, it was like my brain, my brain was like uh, put in a trillion different, different places. So, and then I was, I just lost it. I never, I was like, some, you know, there was something I was like, telling me, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then, but I couldn't control it. You know, I was, I was no longer myself. The power of God already took over. In fact, the, the, the Sunday night that the prophet, you know, called me out, I had a dream and I saw uh, this huge guy that I've never seen before. The muscle where one arm, one of his arms were about my whole size. The guy was so huge. That was the Sunday night I got the prophecy. And then he was telling me, he said, oh, where have you been? Uh, because I didn't come to church with you on Sunday. Do you think you can escape from me? You know, so, but I was like, who are you? The, the dream just changed. But that was, that was the, the, the ancestral spirit, the, 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 the family idol, you know, the stronghold, you know, the, the, the stronghold that have been impeding me all my life. That, that's been and that's how that spirit was cast out and ever since then your life has changed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Amen. Let's so put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. <laughs> now, brother, in the course of your testimony, you mentioned as well that you were under the affliction of this spirit of lust, alcoholism, smoking. Ever since that deliverance, what can you tell us about the changes in those areas? Uh, you know, 
I've actually uh, stopped all this before now uh, because when, when, the, when the crisis hit, it was like the Lord Jesus actually used that crisis to slap me back into reality, you know, it's because it's, he loves me, I believe he loves me, you know, I've seen him in my revelation too, so, but all the, all the urges, all the, the desires, all the cravings for all that is gone now, you know, like I got peace, I got peace like I've never had before in my life. That, that evening when I was uh, delivered, it was like somebody lifted a truck off of my chest, you know, so that, it was, I felt so light, and when I came through I was I was laughing I was rejoicing I was happy and ever since then I've been I've been just happy you know basically amen let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time we thank God for our brother's life and right now so what is your word of advice to our viewers all over the world oh man uh, the greatest lesson for me here is uh, if God loves you he won't take no for an answer you know uh, and it's painful, it's very, very painful to be disciplined by God, even though the end is going to be good, but it's painful, you know. I really didn't have to go through all this, but this is the way I chose to learn simple lesson. And the lesson is, don't ever, ever, ever be on the wrong side of history with God, you know. Don't ever, ever be on the wrong side of history with God. Believe in Him, trust in Him, you know. Put all of your hope, you know, on Him and he would definitely, definitely take you to your final destination. Amen. Glory be to God. Let's put our hands together for, for Jesus Christ. And then finally, sir, you said you were in the past among those who condemned Prophet T.B. Joshua, criticized him, called him all sorts of names, but at the end of the day, the person that you thought was a devil ended up being the same person that God used to deliver you. What is your word of advice to people who have maybe a, a similar impression or have negative opinions towards Prophet T.B. Joshua as a result of rumors or slanderous remarks they have heard based on your own life experience? Uh, you know, even now, when I hear the prophet, it's like I've never even heard his voice before. You know, I can feel the love coming out of his messages. I can feel the power coming out of his heart. You know, and my advice for everybody out there who is skeptical is, you know, please stop being skeptical. You're delaying yourself. You know, you're really holding yourself back. It's, it's, not, it's not godly. It's not righteous to talk to my line, man of God, you know, the, the, the step of righteousness is for you to go to God and find out, hey, is this guy for real? Is this guy genuine? You know, before you uh, join folks that don't know what they're doing to be castigating man of God. So please, uh, one word, stop. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Jesus Christ one more time. Nous allons entendre le témoignage de cet homme après avoir reçu une prophétie dimanche dernier. L'homme de Dieu a dit qu'il y avait un homme ici qui vient d'être juste de sortir de prison. Il est sorti de prison après avoir été rapporté par sa femme lui-même qu'il avait mis en prison. Il a confirmé que cela est vrai, que c'est un Nigérian qui a vécu pendant 10 ans aux états unis Il a rencontré cette femme il y a 3 ans et ça faisait 3 ans qu'ils étaient ensemble. Et cette femme lui a appris à faire bien de mauvaises choses, comme boire énormément. Il a l'habitude de boire jusqu'à être sourd. C'est comme cela qu'il est devenu alcoolique. Il a dit qu'un soir, justement, alors qu'il était, il était très sourd, sa femme lui cette femme lui a dit de venir le rencontrer dans la chambre, mais il était tellement ivre qu'il s'est trompé de chambre. Il est entré dans la chambre de la fille de cette femme, et c'est comme cela qu'il a abusé de la fille et a couché avec sa fille. Sa fille a rapporté cela à sa mère qui a appelé immédiatement la police. C'est comme cela qu'il s'est retrouvé au tribunal et que normalement il devait être recevoir une sentence de 10 ans. Il a dit qu'il a rencontré un pasteur, un pasteur américain là-bas, qui lui a parlé de Tibi Joshua, disant qu'il prie avec la synagogue de toute nation qu'il devait regarder. Mais il a dit qu'il se rappelait que du Nigeria, il n'aimait pas justement l'homme de Dieu, Prophète Joshua, il n'aimait pas Emmanuel Télévision. Il a l'habitude de parler contre lui, mais il a dit cet homme, ce pasteur, lui a donné quand même une vidéo à regarder, de prier avec l'homme de Dieu, prophète Joshua. Il a dit qu'effectivement, après avoir prié avec l'homme de Dieu, c'est comme cela que sa sentence s'est réduite à 5 ans. Et après avoir fait 3 ans de prison, c'est comme cela qu'il a été libéré. Il a dit qu'il est revenu ici au Nigeria et ce pasteur lui a dit d'aller immédiatement à la synagogue de toutes les nations. Et avant de venir ici, il a dit qu'il a eu un rêve, il a vu que l'homme de Dieu lui a donné un papier disant le nombre 17. Il a dit rencontre-moi le 17. C'est comme cela qu'il est venu à l'église dimanche dernier qui était le 16. Il a reçu cette prophétie et le 17 effectivement c'est à ce moment là que l'homme de Dieu a prié pour lui et que l'esprit méchant s'est manifesté en lui et aujourd'hui il a dit qu'il est complètement libre, qu'il n'a plus de désir de pouvoir boire il est complètement libre de son passé et dans toute la gloire à Dieu, il conseille aux gens de ne pas juger, de ne pas non plus avoir la mauvaise langue de croire en notre Seigneur Jésus Christ, il vous guidera il guidera vos pas 
Acabamos de escuchar el testimonio de un hombre que fue liberado por, a través de la profecía del profeta T.B. Joshua. Este hombre no creía pues en este ministerio de Dios y no creía en este hombre, el hombre de Dios que le llamaban, porque le decían que él era un falso profeta, que él no era un verdadero hombre de Dios. Y él ahora nos pide, pide perdón al ministerio porque él no comprendía eso, él tiene un trasfondo de una madre musulmana. Y entonces desde esa, hace mucho tiempo él sufre de pesadillas y tiene como ma, malos sueños. Él aplica, él aplicó para la visa para ir a Estados Unidos porque él tenía un retroceso en el área de negocios acá en, en su ciudad Nigeria. Y una vez llegando a Estados Unidos al empezar su carrera, eh, él estuvo me, in, envuelto en, en cosas de alcoholismo y lo tuvieron que meter a la cárcel porque llegó a un nivel de ebriedad muy alto. Cuando fue a la cárcel le dijeron que él tendría, estaba condenado por 10 años. Sin embargo, un pastor de Estados Unidos le recomendó que se uniera a este ministerio a través del Emanuel TV online y que él podría ver este, los videos del profeta T.B. Joshua y podría orar con él y para su liberación. Y así fue. Él oró juntamente con el profeta T.B. Joshua a través de Emanuel TV y él recibió liberación. Y no solo eso, sino que reducieron de los 10 años de condena a solo 5 años. Una vez que terminaron sus 5 años de condena, él vino para Nigeria y aquí en Nigeria decidió visitar al profeta. Para visitar al profeta, él antes de eso tuvo un sueño, un sueño en el que él recibió en su mente eh, la imagen del profeta Tibi Joshua y el número 17. Y justamente cuando este hombre llegó a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones fue el día domingo 16 y el día lunes 17 él, él recibió su liberación a través de la oración, la línea de oración del profeta Tibi Joshua. Él en esta línea de oración nos cuenta que antes de ir a la línea de oración el lunes, él tuvo un sueño en el cual aparecían dos gigantes que estaban a su costado y le, le dijeron, no te hemos acompañado al servicio de, de ayer domingo, pero hoy iremos contigo. Y así fue como estos gigantes se aparecieron en el momento de la liberación y fue manifestado el espíritu que él tenía dentro de él. Y ahora camina bajo la luz de su testimonio para la gloria de Dios. Shall we put our hands together for our Lord Jesus? Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Yes, we believe that you have been blessed by this one, uh, wonderful testimonies that we've been listening to uh, since morning. And right now, we just want to quickly listen to another testimony of uh, the morning water. And as we listen to their testimony, be blessed in Jesus' name. Continuamos con la sección de testimonio. En este momento vamos a escuchar otro de los maravillosos testimonios y los animamos a todos ustedes para que recuerden que cada vez que escuchamos los testimonios y lo que Dios ha hecho en la vida de otras personas, estamos edificando nuestra fe. Así que recuerden también que el agua de la mañana está completamente disponible y ustedes la pueden obtener, pueden dársela a sus seres queridos, a sus amigos, pues es el mejor regalo que pueden dar. Pues eh, Jesucristo y la sangre sangre de Jesucristo está actuando a través de ella. Continuamos. Ok, uh, sir, you are welcome to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Can you tell us your name and introduce uh, your family to us and your testimony? Emmanuel Church. Emmanuel. I'm named, sir, Mr. and Mrs. Akonji Olushala Phillips. We are from Ohio State. This is my wife. Mrs. Akonji Adedayo, and that is my mother, Mrs. Akonji Adone, and that is my mother-in-law, so Mrs. Onotoye. Okay, the woman in white is your mother. Is my mother, and the woman on the other side is Mrs. Onotoye, Oinda Mola. Your mother-in-law? Yeah, my mother-in-law, and these are my junior brothers and my junior sisters. Yeah, the problem that brought us to Snug Church of One Nation is the problem of barrenness. It all started when, we get my, when I get married to my wife in 2012. As no matter as a couple, after marriage, the next thing is pregnancy. But since then, we've been looking, trying, 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 no pregnancy. And what was the cause of your barrenness then? It is due to loose bank account and on my own part, on my wife has this PID, which is pelvic inflammatory disease. And 
I was imagining that what is the cause of all this sickness and what is all these things? <laughs> we pray, pray, we've been to so many places. We've been to so many places. We do a lot of fasting and prayer, seven days fasting and prayer, every, every month fasting and prayer because of this pregnancy. But on to now, but last year, May 8th, we came to Synagogue Church of All Nation. And I've been in Lagos. I was born and brought up in Lagos. And I've been, I never believed that I can come to Synagogue. Because I'm a type that we believe in prayer and fasting, that a prayer can do everything. Not, I don't believe that apart from that, any, God can even use anybody that can even touch me and can solve all my problem immediately. Was at last year, May 8th, we came to Sinai Church of Nation. I was sitting at the back there. There was a message that last year, May 8th, offense. When I look at the message, I was not looking, ah, this one is different from the one we used to hear in my former church. I was looking at the man of God, he is preaching, he's preaching. But at the end of the message, I just discovered that I was crying. I was crying. And so I made a lot of offense that I didn't know that is blocking my way. But the following Sunday, we came back again. That today, I want to listen to this man of God again. That ah, there's something in this place. Luckily, we are opportune that Sunday to touch by the man of God. But after that touching, I've been experiencing the power of God. I've never experienced that kind of touch in my life. Since I've been born, I've never experienced that kind of touch in my life. But that day, the man of God touched us. And he gave us money water. My brothers and sisters, my life changed immediately. After the touch, me and my wife, we went to home and we ministered this morning water. And man of God gave us this morning water and we ministered this morning water and we went as husband and wife. We just, we, I'm just giving a try that I believe something will happen because we've been to so many places. So the faith is not there again. Ah, I was just saying, well, let's see what is going to happen. Well, I just have the faith that something is going to happen. Even before we came to this place, the hospital we went to to go and agonize. I was telling that the owner that I'm going to synagogue that I'm tired of spending money. I will not I will not give anybody cover again unless I get to synagogue that that's the only place I can receive my salvation. I just use one mind and one faith. But that woman now said, oh, don't go there. Don't go there. Just go and just go and buy all the drugs I asked you to buy. She calculated all the money to spend, everything that she was telling me, we are going to spend less than 800000 I said, Madam, look at me very well. I'm not going to spend a cover, and I'm not, give, I'm not going to give you one naira. I'm not going to give you again. I'm going to synagogue. And I said, okay, you are adamant. No problem. You will come back and tell me that you should come and do the, the, this thing, the, the treatment. Okay, no problem. Then we now came to synagogue. June 5, we are opportune. To be touched by a man of God that day, a day I will never forget in my life. So then, you know, I started looking. My wife, first month, she didn't see her period. I said, no, maybe that thing is joking. Second month, she didn't see the period again. I said, okay, that was good. Let's go to that hospital back. Let's go and meet that woman. We now went to the hospital back. We didn't meet the woman. We met her daughter. I said, I want that woman to do that test, or her daughter. I don't want anybody to do it for me. And her daughter now run the test. At the process, when the daughter now do the test, I just hear a, a noise. Ah! It is positive. I said, I said it. I said, I said it. I said, I said it. I said, I said, it. <laughs> I said this man of God. God of the I can never fail me. I said, I said it. Before I now say, what is that? What is that? I said, God of the I have done it to. Prophet TV Joshua. 
has done it to I said, what happened? And the accountant in that hospital was telling them that they should be trying to be watching the in that hospital. But the boss was saying that, no, they don't want to watch it. But well, that day, ah, my brothers and sister, there's God in synagogue. There's God in synagogue. If you have any problem, if you are in synagogue, forget that problem. Just forget it. Once you step your full step to this place, just forget your problem. Forget it. Just do that it's solved already. Ah, ah, God of the world, you are too much. So that is uh, how God Almighty delivered your wife and yourself from the problem of barrenness for many years, and she became pregnant. And today, what can you say? Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Now you are a father. I'm, I'm a father. I'm a father of Temitope, Evelyn, Sarah, Akonji. Shall we put our hands together for our Lord Jesus? In addition, in addition, people of God, if your prayer answer, people will tell you that your prayer have, have, have your answer. Because people are now asking me, Shola, how do you do it? Yeah, because of time, we believe that you have a lot to say. Can you give a word of advice to those who have similar problem that God Almighty have just set you free from? <clears throat> in a nutshell, I just want to tell people outside there that <laughs> don't doubt <laughs> poverty video <laughs> show and don't doubt God. There's a real Jesus here. The headquarter of Jesus is in this place. The only place you can see where angels are flowing. That if I thought you should, if you should eat for money tonight, if you come here, if you should pray here, angels will touch every part of your body. Hallelujah. Shall we put our hands together for our Lord Jesus? <laughs> so, yes, we believe that our brother is so happy uh, for what God Almighty has done and his life through the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua. And we believe that you have a lot to say. But because of time, we would like to call this testimony uh, for the benefit of the viewers. But we, we would like to listen to your mother because she insisted that she have one or two things to say uh, because of what God Almighty has done in your life. Let's quickly listen to your mother. Mama, I saw a fair sorrow. Kill a fair sorrow. Pisana, a congee. So, Modupala, or long TV Joshua. Don't we want to laugh for me? You got your long, long of making she and Cockerry. A bit more dry. Miss Session, you all share good for me. Go, Lord, you are mommy. You are what I be. Lord, you are what we told you. Or do man will not you want to love you. More was of one of you. Elei so ma bi mo bayi se ki sa ko aja le lei mo ni mi ni gba mo ba fa mo ni ma le lo ni mo ni ma le sa ni gbogbo bi ti bo nde church won ni a jo lo won atomo mi bara won mu ki ma le mo wa lo si ori oke mo wa lo gba dura mo ni wa lo omo yo mo jesus je ki jesus mo e igbo ti ma ri won mo gbogbo ma mi mo ma ti wa lo ati lo church yi eyi sagog ah mo ni jesus o se o da bi ke o wa di private hospital Baba gbe lo ti general hospital ah mo lo gbo aye mi ti se lori pe o ti e wo church ogun yen ti se so mo yan olohun logo pe laari laari irin ajo to wan inu church bo gbo po lo ah mo ni jesus olohun ta gbo gbo ma se o bo koko yira ninu le pe ta gbo gbo se ti bi joshua o se gba to ya bo se wa sibi bo se wa si mo royin yen yeah, we've just listened to our mother. She just explained that when uh, our daughter-in-law was having this problem of barrenness for many years, that they've gone to several places in search of solution or to no avail. She particularly told our son that this particular lady, I'm going to send that pack out of your house because I can't wait anymore. I've endured enough. This lady has been looking for the fruit of the womb. I don't think she's going to have a child for you. So I'm going to send Send up packing. So this has been the struggle in the home, a lot of trouble in the house until she learned that they finally came to the synagogue to the all nations, and she was so happy about that. And finally, when the, uh, the daughter-in-law got pregnant, she gave all the glory to God. Because of that reason, she came today to say thank you, Jesus, for all the way long in the life of our son. Once again, shall we put our hands together for our Lord Jesus?
So we, we, we just want to encourage you, brother, that uh, continue to train this child in the way of the Lord so that when she grows up, she will not depart from it. And we pray that God Almighty in his infinite mercy will grant the entire family the grace to go and see no more and train this child in the way of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, let us put our hands together for our Lord Jesus. Escuchamos ese otro maravilloso testimonio de esta familia que por cinco años sufrieron de esterilidad y no podían tener hijos. Ellos nos cuentan que estaban... Wow, I, I, I will pass money. Don't worry, you just wait, wait behind. After the service, I will personally see your family. So, and I'm sorry for interrupting, okay? It's a blessing. Thank you. Come on, come, come. Let me share this fruit with me. the church you want to make us jealous please go and do that too. it's for your family there are many family here that will feel jealous uh, you want them to, 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 to I mean begin to ask more it's for you thank you viewers all over the world thank you thank you for your time God's time is the best God time is the best. That's once you do things at God's time, you have the best. At God's time, everything looks good. Can't you hear the noise? At God's time. That is God's time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. When each time I do things as God's time, I don't look around for the where to say and what to do. They are always around me. What to say, what to do, how to do them at God's time. He provides them. It is when we are not doing things as God's time, we begin to wrestle looking for our own ways. Where to say, what to do, where to go. We begin to use our discretion. Thinking, what will I say? How will I say them? Where will I go? How will I go? What will I do then? When we are not doing things at God's time, when we do things at our own time, it's always for us, the thinking, the reason, everything is always very rough at our own time. So when you, whatever you do at God's time, you, you find them effortless. Effortless. But when you do things at your own time, you it will require your energy, your ability, your effort, then tension, pressure, which could result to sickness, disease, heart attack, because you are you are the one doing them become so tired. God's time is the best. You listen to our son, not mine, not mine, the choice. Not mine, not mine, the choice.
When you sleep at God's time, you have a wonderful dream, not nightmare. Not nightmare. At God's time, you require inner grace. Inner grace at God's time. When you do things at God's time, you always enjoy the inner grace. Inner grace. God's time is the best. You can say God's time is God's promise. God's time is God's way. You require, you call it God's time, God's way, God's promise. It is when you do take at God's time, you can put your trust, trust can work. Because wh whom will you trust? The person that sent you, who sent you? It's not his time you are doing what you are doing. Who now said you? It's not the one. You, you can put your trust on him, on him. You put your trust in him according to his will. Tell your neighbor, put your trust in him according to his will. Put your trust in him according to his promise. Put your trust in him according to his time. You may be seated. So, trust is, is of no use without his time, without his promise, without his way. I trust him. Okay. To do what you are doing? Are you doing that here at this time? You can't trust. It's not him you trust. Trust is of waste. Faith is no real. Faith is no real without his time. Faith is no real without his promise. Faith is no real without his way. I have faith. Okay, that faith must be in him. It's time, it's way, it's way. It's no real. Let's say, faith is no real. Faith is not real. Without his way. Faith is no real. Without his promise. Faith is no real. Without his time. So you say you have faith. Say, have oh, faith in God. Have faith in God. All things are possible. Have faith in God. And you cannot separate God from His will. You cannot separate God from His promises. You cannot separate God from His time. So therefore, faith in His time, promise, is we. Faith in God, our faith in God, all things are possible, our faith in God. So where are we going? In this case, we, it may, it's like a, many Christians are trapped. They don't know God they are serving. Because faith is no real without his way. You must know his way and have faith in him. Faith is no real. Remember, will of God is the same as promise of God. It's time to. You must do things as it's time for him to follow you, for him to be with you, for him to protect you, for him to listen to you, for him to be with you at his time. I 
I trust him. Me, it's time. You trust his time. You put your trust in his time, in his way, in his way, in his promises. I hope this is not cause distraction. Hmm? Because I see many people keep looking at my hand. Camera, please. People keep looking at my hand. I say, this man doesn't wear something like this. What, is, what, is it? What's, what come upon him? Nothing come upon me. This is faith bracelet. I'm crazy about faith bracelets. Tell your neighbor, I'm crazy. Tomorrow I wear 10. They are faith bracelets, the one you have with you. I decided to wear beautiful, different color, my choice color. Okay, where's your own? Okay, come and see, gentlemen here. One man here. Come on. Woo! Let's, let's just show, show them, show them. Oh my God! Show his face. He wanted people to see his face. His face, his hand, good. That's a beautiful. I have to. <laughs> what, what, what are you saying? What are you doing with this? Are you, are you? Take more of me. Yeah? Give me more of you. Yeah. This is I'm this pressing is. in. Uh, I, I want to believe all what you have been seeing since morning, the testimony of people, and the, the, the will of God we have been seeing, the promises of God we have been seeing. Because all this happened because it happened at God's time. It is the promises of God. They are will of God. We have been looking at them. What a wonderful blessing. These are the things you are, you are meditating on. Amen. You know, I told you that the way become a part of us by meditation. Let someone say, let someone say it. The word become part of me by meditation. The word becomes part of me. I can hear you. The word of God become part of me by meditation. The word of God becomes part of me by meditation. That is the only way it can become not by thinking. You know, I told you about thinking. You can only think about your situation. When it comes to weather girl, you can't think about the weather girl, but your situation. So because meditation is of upper house and thinking is of lower house. When you are thinking, you are still in this realm. You are still with us here. But when you are meditating, you are not in our midst here. Is of art. Meditation is of heart. It's of our spirit. So when you when you when you meditate on the all what you have seen this morning and what is going on and what I'm saying and turn it over and over and over again in your heart. The more your spirit act upon the word. No, spirit means heart. The more your heart act upon the word. Your heart cannot act upon the word without meditate over and over again in your heart. Are you with me? Huh? I, I repeat again. For, the, for, your, for your heart to act upon the word. I mean, act means your spirit. That is man's spirit. For your heart to act upon the word, you must meditate on the word and turn it over and over again in your heart. Are you there? That is the only way the word can dominate your heart. And when the word dominates your heart, 
it influences your conduct and character. You begin to behave that way. The weather gets be faithful. You start seeing yourself being faithful. It dominate. It influences your conduct. You 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 that complain about deliverance. I don't want to smoke again. Meditate on the word and see whether you smoke again. Before you know it, the word of God say no. You begin to behave that way. That is self-deliverance. Are you with me? When the word dominates your heart, not your mouth. When the word dominates your heart, heart me, man's spirit. When the word dominates your spirit, it influences your conduct and character. That you behave, you begin to behave that way. And don't forget that the way is a visit with God. That is, meditation is a visit with God. Say, say to yourself, that is, meditation is a visit with God. That is, meditation in the way is a visit with God. Say it again. Again. So, see, let us see your hand. Yeah, please, take it again. So, this help on the outside. When you become grow strong, you don't need this. But at the same time, you still need it. People like me, I still need it. I need it, I use it. Sometimes I, I want to sleep. I just want to sleep. Well, I just want to keep myself busy, something. Because I always want to be busy on the outside. So therefore, I have it with me. So me, I don't want to concentrate. I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in anything, just. Oh, you are inside a flight or vehicle? You're busy with this? You may, you may be seated, thank you, sir. So, why is yours? And the, the starting is good here in this house of God. So you say, I, I would like to behave this way. As the word of God says. That shall not do this, that shall do this, that shall not do that. You have been struggled to do that, to, to follow the word of God. By meditation, the word become part of you. By meditation, the word become part of you. It's not by knowing the word of God. It's not by knowing, you will know, and you preach it and teach it. It's simple. There are many teachers of the word. Preacher of the word, author of the Bible, but, but the word is not part of them. That you know the word does not mean it's part of you. It's only when the word becomes part of you, you can live the word. You live it, not only preach it or teach it, become teacher, become preacher, become pastor, become bishop. No. Live the word. The word can only rule you when it dominating you. So, and this is the time you can begin now. Whatever you see, closing your eyes, that is tradition. Tell your neighbor, closing your eye while pray is a tradition. It's not spiritual. I'm telling you. And I know I will be attacked for this. Because this is the way, this is the rock the church is built. So somebody cannot just come and tell the Christian that they're closing your eyes is not it's a tradition. I, I know God will protect me. I'm I'm in trouble. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm in trouble. It's like telling the church that uh, t 30 day, t 40 days fasting is a tradition. It's like you say that. No, no, no. no. Mm. Continue close your eyes, okay? <laughs> Anytime you want to pray, you must close your eyes. Okay? Mm, please, I withdraw. <laughs> But me, I will not close my eye there because I don't trust you. <laughs> I, will, I don't trust you. Mm. No, me, I, will, I don't close eye. I don't close eye. If you see me dim my eye, I'm only I'm looking at you clearly. I'm seeing clearly. Uh, no, no. If I'm there, if I'm praying, when it is time for prayer, rise prayer, 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 everybody, I don't close eyes. <laughs> Because this is not the eye I used to see Jesus. This is the eye I used to see you. I must see you. <laughs> I must see you. Mm -hmm. I must see you. So make sure you close your eyes, please. I, I say, please, do you close your eyes? Only, I'm just talking about myself. That I, I don't close my eyes. Um, so this, this eye is a sign. It's not the eyes of faith. This one. This one is not the eye of faith. So this one. I use it to see you. To see you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. It's always good to be in your marriage. And you know the reason why it's always wonderful seeing you around, around? Because we have different people here today. Always different people. But I will not be able to give you the ratio. No, I will not be able to give you. We have people that come to see what is happening here today. You are welcome. So I'm here today to see if what I'm watching on Emmanuel TV is true. Mm. But gradually some of them are beginning to say, oh, it's true. But not all of them yet. <laughs> you are welcome. And nobody wants to answer me. No, 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 you don't need to answer me. Your heart has answered me already. Uh, because I'm speaking to your heart. I say you are welcome. And then we have some people here that he said, I must come here and say sorry. I have said a lot about this ministry. I never believed that the thing would turn around like this. In fact, I fasted for many days against this ministry. Ah, I must go there. I may not come out to confess, but I will sit in the chair and begin to ask for forgiveness. Don't worry, God has forgiven you. Don't worry. Feel free, feel free, feel free, feel free. Free, 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 you are part of the house. <laughs> now, why are you clapping at this time? So, huh? Can we count these people that are clapping as uh, people that uh, I'm talking about? I've seen a lot of them like that. <laughs> oh my God, so, yes. I say, oh my God, I have said a lot. In fact, I say over my dead body, I, I will come to this church. But my real body is here, not today. Mm -hmm. How do we explain that? If you say over your dead body, you come to this church. But now, today, your life is here. Ah, this world is, 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 is terrifying. You can't just believe. It's terrifying. Fasting, praying, and say over my dead body, will I come to this church? Anytime you see my TV, say, please, off it. it, it it's, a, it's a devil workshop. Off it, off it, off it. I don't want to see. But suddenly you realize that uh, this is. Hmm? I can see. You begin to ask yourself, what is wrong? What is actually, what is wrong? Hmm? It means we, 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 are, we are so many people are ignorance of things of the spirit. Eh? And the, your real self is spirit. Look at me. 
your body, look at your body, stomach, head, muscle, body, bum bum, everything, <laughs> this. Your, the real part, if the real part is removed, and the real part is that spirit man, it is just the spirit man in me that is real. Other are dust. Do you know what I mean by dust? Just see switch. Dust. Dust. Sometimes you want to eat and your food will drop on the floor, you have to pick it. And you don't know that part of those sand are people but parts. People they bury. There is nowhere they have not buried people. Even where you leave the house you build, a lot of people are buried there. Because this, you are just coming to this world, a lot of people have gone. Many have gone. Let's say, many have gone. Sometimes you need sound, you, are, you want to make more the block. You don't know those sand you are putting together, they are people part, bone. You see many bone, you think it's animal bone, it's a human bone. Hmm? Look, at, look at yourself, take your time, look around at yourself, look at yourself, look at yourself. Can you see how beautiful, how fat, how slim, how tall your, your belly is big and everything is a lot of food inside your stomach? The real part, the real one God is consigning about all is your spirit. Every other will return to dust. Tell your neighbor, other will return to dust. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hey, all that will return to dust, six feet. And the only one that is concerning and real is spirit. So, and that one that is real is the one you don't take care of. You cream all part of your body. You bleach your body, you take care of your body, you do all sort of things to your body, you look at mirror, you see your body, but you cannot see that the real one in the mirror. And you can't know how it looks. But you keep concerning so much about your appearance and your body, but the real one you cannot see in the mirror. Vanity upon vanity. And all this money, corruption, this, stealing, killing, living above our stand, our standard, are for those faculties, organs, not the real one. If I'm talking to you, I'm talking to the real one. I'm not talking to your body, but the real 